Welcome to another Sweeping Saturday. I'm Janet Murphy and with me today is Dolores McCallum and we're going to talk about rotation, how to put it on the rock, why it's important and some tips and tricks that will help you make some more shots. So why is rotation important? Imparting rotational energy into the stone is what allows it to consistently travel down the ice surface. The running surface of the rock works in concert with the ice surface to enable rocks to curl either clockwise or counterclockwise. Putting on an adequate rotation, three to four being ideal, will allow for a consistent path for your rock to travel down the ice surface. The first thing to consider uh, when you're applying rotation to the rock is how you're going to hold the rock. So if you look at the bottom of the rock, you can see where the center is. So we have to figure out where that is on the top of the rock. So let's turn it back over. So the center is probably right about there. Now if you look at your hand that's going to be holding onto the rock, where would you think the part of your hand would be that would be over the center. It's actually right here. This part of your hand should be over the center of the rock. So you would grab it like this and then wrap your hand around. So you can see the palm of my hand is actually not even touching the rock and this allows me to pivot the rock on its center. So as Dolores said, we grip the rock using uh, the middle pads of our fingers place our thumb on the top and then we set our turn. So if we're going to throw a clockwise rotation, we're going to set the turn over towards the 10 o'clock position and we're always going to release the rock at 12 o'clock. So we're setting at 10 and we're releasing at 12. If we were to throw the counterclockwise, we set at 2 and we release at 12. Great, so we're set up for 10 and we know we're going to release at 12. That's what I do, you say, but I still don't seem to get enough rotation. The reason is the time that it's taking you to move that rock from 10 o'clock to moving it to 12 o'clock is too long. You've extended the release time. So let me show you just in a quick uh, from the hack. If I slowly release that rock, it does rotate, but it rotates slowly. Conversely, if I move my hands, my release from 10 to 2, 10 to 12, quickly, it rotates much quicker. So we know that we need to move that rock from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock or from 2 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Where in our slide does that occur? It's going to differ for everyone. It's going to be somewhere towards the end of your slide prior to the hog line and it's going to occur over the distance of about a broom length. So what I mean by that is you want to set this rock at its 10 o'clock position and you're going to hold it at its 10 o'clock position all the way through your pullback, all the way through your press forward and as you slide out and get ready to release that rock, you're going to make that motion happen quickly over the length of a broom. So we promised you some tips and tricks to help work on this. Um, we've had some new uh, delivery um, training devices built this season. So they're available here for you in our resource center. And uh, if you're practicing alone, you don't need anyone to hold the broom. You can use one of these. And you also don't need to look up, and that's the tip. When you're practicing and working on your release and rotation, Look down, look at your hand and see what it's doing. See, are you holding it at the 10 o'clock position and releasing it at 12 o'clock or are you letting it start to slide? And the other tip is don't let it go past 12 o'clock. It's okay if you go to 11.30, 11.45, but you definitely never want to be getting past that 12 o'clock. Otherwise, you're adding directional uh, energy into the rock and we just want to add rotational energy.